the field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! Improbable scenes! It's where the dream begins to achieve the ultimate victory. The underdogs have prevailed once again! One cup, open to all. There is a celebration in Orlando. Now, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. field doesn't care if you're a pro or trying to be one. It only asks, how bad do you want it? It's unbelievable! The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. These two sides met in MLS just six days ago, but tonight they vie for a spot in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup quarterfinal as Houston Dynamo play host to Minnesota United. It was a 1-0 on the day, last Wednesday at Allianz Field, Bangi Langwana, the only goal in the game. And as you see in that central region of the bracket tonight, they buy for a chance to face Austin FC or Chicago Fire in the next round of the Cup. Chris Whittingham alongside Eric Dobransky. And Eric, as we can get to our players to watch, have to begin with Thor Ulfarsson of Houston Dynamo, scored in the last round and scored at the weekend in the league. Somebody that is in tremendous form he can finish in a variety of ways from distance inside the box. He had a tremendous shot from distance in that game winner against Sporting KC, but then the tremendous header, the late equalizer against FC Dallas. He finds a way into the match. He scored an early one against Sporting KC and a late one against FC Dallas. And for Minnesota United, have to focus on Bongi Longwane has scored two goals in that Open Cup round of 32 match against Philly Union and also scored the late winner for Minnesota over Portland. Playing with a lot of confidence right now and it's somebody that Houston Dynamo are going to have to keep track of. He's so explosive and dynamic on and off the ball. As we can bring you to the starting lineups for both of these teams, only Amina Bassi remains in the team for, for Houston Dynamo that played against FC Dallas at the weekend. Minnesota, six changes from the team that won away at Portland last time out. They make the trip down to Texas straight from Portland, and it's six changes from that starting lineup. And it's Clint Irwin back in the starting lineup after he saved the winning penalty against Kai Wagner. It's Philadelphia Union in the fourth round of the Open Cup. Coming into that back line, the former Houston Dynamo player, Zarek Valentin, DJ Taylor moves over to left back. Brent Coleman comes into the center of defense. Sang Bin Jong is back in the starting lineup. He'll play in behind and sometimes with Mendez Garcia. And Will Trapp comes back into that midfield area. You see for Houston, the only player that stays in the starting 11 from their 1-1 draw away at Dallas in the Texas Derby, Amina Bassi play a key part in that front three. Our match day referee is Rami Tushan. He will get us started in mere moments as the fifth round of the cup gets going in Texas as Houston Dynamo play host to Minnesota United. And Houston bringing through quite a few changes into their starting lineup. Ten changes in total and between the five players along that back. The goalkeeper and the back four, there is not a single start in MLS among them. Taylor Maples playing it back to Andrew Tarbell. Taylor Maples, a Houston Dynamo 2 player, was in the, the MLS Next Pro Best 11 in 2022, and it's his second appearance here in the Open Cup on a short-term loan from Dynamo 2. Just possessed there was Nelson Quinones. warm a clear evening here in Houston as we start to hit the summer months when it's become one of the damper grounds in MLS Paul Benton behind and Garcia gets to it first ahead of Eric Svietchenko who makes his first Houston Dynamo appearance after joining from Micheland in Denmark Brad Smith unable to get on the other end of that switch. Zvietchenko, one of the 
big acquisitions for Ben Olsen, making 16 additions to the squad in total in this transfer window gone by. As Longuano will play the cross and over the head there of Mendel Garcia and Mujin Murana taking no chances by heading away for a corner. And you mentioned those squad rotations just a moment ago, and we'll talk about it a little bit throughout the match, is the congestion of the MLS schedule along with this U.S. Open Cup schedule. So I think the opening exchanges are going to be so important. You look at Minnesota, they're playing on the front foot thus far. It's really early, but you'll see in this 10, 15 minute span what each team's intent is and, and getting an early set piece is really important as well. Minnesota in the midst of eight games in 28 days as the corner does get swung into that six yard area and a strong claim from Andrew Tarbelt. And after two years with fellow Texas side Austin FC. Rodden, he thought to potentially be the starter, but Brad Stuver, who had largely been the third goalkeeper in MLS, not only has won it, but has thrived in his time with Austin. So, moves across the state. Points up here with the Dynamo, did start the last two rounds of the Open Cup. And two clean sheets as well. And that previous round against Sporting KC, the early red card to Gasper in the 35th minute. Saw Houston Dynamo playing down a player throughout that match and collectively and defensively doing such a great job of holding that Sporting KC off the scoreboard. And a pair of one nils for Houston to get to this stage of the Open Cup. And even besides the opening exchanges that, that you're going to see, whether it's tactically or, or matchup wise, these are two teams that, regardless of the MLS regular season thus far, in the U.S. Open Cup, Houston Dynamo, two straight clean sheets in their two previous rounds. Minnesota United, six goals in two games, three goals a game. That's almost, that is half their goals for in the MLS regular season. So this is an offense that's proven to be explosive here in the U.S. Open Cup. Nice idea there from Rosales to try the dummy and the subsequent cross. It's handled rather easily there by Tarbell. The last round of the Open Cup was a cracker of a game. It is 3-3 after 120 minutes in Minnesota eventually going through on penalties. But they were 2-0 up in regular time. They were 3-2 up in extra time and gave up late equalizers in both stages to Kai Wagner, the Philadelphia left back, but it was Wagner whose final penalty was saved by Clint Irwin. That's how Minnesota arrived at this stage. And really a match that was a lot of action past the first half on, as you mentioned, all those goals happening after, at the 68th minute and beyond. Kick one there by Old Farson. This fixture was part of the runs for both these sides to finals in 2018. A tournament which Houston would go on to win. Beat Minnesota in the round of 16 as it does come to this right side. King Jonas is cross. One initially there. We'll come here to Brooklyn Reigns. He doesn't mind the hit, and Clint Irwin had to get fingertips to it. Although, it does go over those fingertips and out for the goal kick. And what a great first introduction to the final third by the Houston Dynamo. Brooklyn Reigns, who had the game winner against Tampa Bay Rowdies in that U.S. Open Cup match. Almost found an early one here. Boxall able to control that one. I thought that Irwin did make the save, but it bounced off the top of the crossbar. Rain Zoo got his first Dynamo goal in the Open Cup in their one to win over Tampa Bay Rowdies in the third round. Here's Taylor Maples. Losing control there. Talking about that history, Houston beating Minnesota. 
the round of 16. Eventually beat Philadelphia Union in the final to win the 2018 edition of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Minnesota the next year beating Houston on the very same stage in this round of 16. Go on to beat New Mexico United and Portland Timbers for eventually losing to Atlanta United in the final. The offside flag is up against Mender Garcia. Leads the line tonight for Adrian Heath's Minnesota United. A few striking options that the Minnesota manager has gone to to try and solve the problem up front. Lisa Maria going again at the weekend. Han Ming Jong is occasionally tried up front. Playing in a two at the moment in this defensive shape. Find that week in, week out goal scorer. Of course, a big part of that is the chance creation, which is limited at this moment in time without Emmanuel Reynoso, who has been reinstated by MLS after taking some time to come back from his native Argentina. Releasing a statement in the last week. It's a difficult time for him and his family reason why he could not come back to Minnesota. Still more to be done in the dressing room with their star man. And integrating him back into the side. Abiyaga. Changing there with Brent Coleman. Minnesota for so long. Olway. In MLS, four years in NASL as well, his 11th season with this club. And their rotational center back in MLS. As Clint Irwin surveys the scene. You can see Minnesota really looking for a balance of being urgent in that final third, but also being patient with Switching the point of attack, creating some of those angles and those channels to play into. Seen well by Garcia, but Rosales dispossessed from behind. Houston putting in challenges from several angles, and eventually the advantage awarded by referee Rami Tushan. Michael Boxall. Minnesota United since the beginning, but the beginning of their tenure in MLS joined midway through that expansion season. First player to hit 100 league appearances for the Loons. Here's Eric Valentin. Played down this very same flank in Dynamo Orange. Here for two years, four assists in 50 matches. Rosales now can play the little cross in. Sang Bin Chong leaving it, but Garcia was deeper into the area and it never came for him. Now Quinones with a burst of pace to get beyond DJ Taylor and trying to hit the cross in towards the onrushing O'Farson, but it does deflect out for the corner. And again, this is that patient and urgent style of play that Minnesota really perfecting thus far here early on in the match you're getting really good numbers forward and I think you you mentioned mentioned the matchup just six days ago and I think it's always difficult to beat a team twice but knowing that each of these matchups are gonna be a little bit more unique tonight really good transition for Houston to earn this corner it is lofted in tracking in the air there Sviatchenko it went over his head off the glancing header and out for the throw. He spoke about the pressure that Minnesota was placing on early in this first half. It was that pressure that got Houston Dynamo in trouble in their matchup last Wednesday. With the lone goal coming from a turnover in the build-up phase for Houston Dynamo. Bossy. Recovering the second ball. 
Changing there with Bill Farson. Caicedo. Line for Ujib Murana. Puts the foul in as he lost control. Another player featured with Dynamo Dos. MLS Next Pro. League in its second season, providing a lot of opportunities, particularly for players that have come through the academies at a lot of MLS clubs. Dynamo very much trying to grow their output in such a talent-rich area of the U.S. as Maples there, just under a bit of pressure from Garcia and forced to just get rid really head back to Tarbell and want to put him under pressure. Smith clears. And Smith who starts in the Open Cup for a second time as it's lofted in towards Garcia, takes it with an arm out, and it very much is handball given against the Colombian. And right now, Houston absorbing a lot of pressure from Minnesota, but they're finding a number of outlets as we see the handball by Garcia. But really counting on some of those transition moments when you when you find Minnesota in this expansive shape. So just having to be careful. And then again, we talked about the previous round against Sporting KC for, for Houston. Only playing with full 11 v 11 for 35 minutes. So really unable to see what their lineup was able to do against Sporting KC. Really had to Pinned some players back. Defended really, really well. It defended really well under Ben Olsen this season, conceding only 11 in the league. They've only scored 11. It's the it's jump. Ben Olsen's teams were known for being very gritty. I might mind the characterization, but defensive at times when he was in DC. He's come to Houston with the intent of playing more proactively, using the ball more. More entertaining soccer, but yet resulting in a flurry of goals. Maples. This ball between lines and now Fossi. Receiving it there from Baird. It's cut out there by Valentin, but it's towards his own goalkeeper, and Irwin leaps to grab it. And really good entry pass there by Maples. Really initiating that sequence. And you were just talking about it. Houston Dynamo, they've really created this defensive identity under Ben Olsen. And sometimes teams, when you, when you create that foundational identity, you feel like sometimes it takes away the freedom of, of attacking and the fluidity of, of the offensive side of the ball. But it's really almost the opposite. It, it starts to build that structure where you do become a little bit more free in the final third you become influential in those runs off the ball and i think that's just a part of the building process with this houston dynamo team really good on the defensive side right now but but just getting to that point where offensively they're they're really finding a rhythm they're starting to collectively connect and you see it in some of those sequences right there initiated by the ball from maples Almost finding that on from Bossi. Minnesota going direct. Sun Bin Chong. As I believe it was Garcia, but the challenge in first that results in the free kick to Houston. And Bin Chong, though, but he was caught. Yeah, sort of a chain reaction. Garcia into Maples, into Sun Bin Chong. And South Korean, a bit slow to get up. That was a good look. It was 2v2. We see the foul on Garcia halting that, that sequence there. But that's where both of these teams are, are going to try to find a good mix and a good balance of stretching each other's back line. Smith just about keeping it in play. Smith, who recovering from a torn ACL sustained last year with 
DC United. It starts fighting competition at left back. Used to bringing a couple of players in that position. It's decent skill here from Quinones working on this right. Bassi. Reigns, and the idea there from Baird was for the back heel, but Bassi had gone. Now the offside flag would come up against Houston. And really good momentum building up for Houston. Again, finding moments where they can collectively join the attack. And you mentioned Smith, somebody that not only creates those numerical advantages out wide, but the services and the delivery, the quality of the delivery is so important for the Houston Dynamo. Irving Adiaga. Houston applying some pressure. Baird, who has played as a center forward for Houston and for the expensive transfer in club history, Sebas Ferreira. Part of the defensive emphasis, particularly in the forward line from Ben Olsen. Baird does the hard yards. Not hit for as many goals as anticipated since joining the Dynamo in 2021. Three and 45 appearances. That's Trap. The switch out towards that left side. Mudana in the way. And now Caicedo on for Amina Pasi. And we talk about that defensive structure by Houston. Now it's really about can that structure just start higher up the field so they regain possession higher, closer to frame. Brad Smith with the cross in and the header away there from Coleman before Quinones can arrive on the scene. We saw it just a moment ago with that front line pressing Minnesota, but that midfield unable to pick up that open pocket of space and Minnesota able to play out. And those are going to be some sequences and some moments where collectively just getting on the same page and finding ways to have numbers forward and sometimes, or a lot of the time, best, best attacking shape is, comes from that defensive shape. That's where Houston's gonna continue to grow into this match. Longwane was being harried. Told you about Bongo Hukle Longwane and the build up to this one scored at the weekend in their win over Portland. Scored two in the last round of the Open Cup. Scored the lone goal in the meeting between these two sides. Last Wednesday night, a win for Minnesota. He has been absolutely on fire. As the free kick will come here is a late challenge in on Corey Baird. And trap. Not pleased with the decision, nor Baird's attempt to sell that decision. Well, Farson was pleading for the yellow as the challenge came in on Corey Baird. And we talk about those opening exchanges and you see Paul Trapp catching the right foot of Baird. That's where you, when you're talking about finding a balance in the mixture of playing physical, but also making sure you don't pick up an early yellow card, especially with the fixtures that you have coming up, adjusted schedule. You don't want to force some sort of squad rotation within a U.S. Open Cup match. Bossi and towards that back post and just unable to get anything on it. Zviachenko, at least anything decisive towards goal. Fans dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. You see highlights of the goals coming from other games. Two other matches in action at the moment as Inter Miami lead it home by a goal to nil over Nashville SC. Franco Negri with the goal in that one. And just before the break in New Jersey, FC Cincinnati going ahead of New York Red Bulls by a goal to nil through a goal from Yu Yakubo. Matches are available on the platforms of Bleacher Report and CBS Sports Golasso.
Coleman. Michael Foxhall. It's about the busy period of fixtures for both of these teams. A couple of MLS midweek match days and the Open Cup keeping teams occupied. Minnesota playing in Portland on Saturday night and electing to just travel here directly to Houston rather than going home and then flying here and here for a couple days. Six changes from that team that played on Saturday for return home to Allianz Field. And this Minnesota will take on Real Salt Lake. Back-to-back -back weekends with Texas Darbies for Houston. Drew 1-1 away at Dallas last time out. And this weekend, we'll entertain Austin FC here at Shell Energy Stadium. Zach Bin Jong with that cheeky idea, but it didn't quite come off. Trap. Play on there with Rosales in the face of some pressure there from Del Quinones. DJ Taylor. Really good composure on the ball by Minnesota. Even when they get dispossessed, they regain possession really quickly, but good decision making. But again, when, when space becomes limited, how are they going to access different areas? They're going to have to do it through link up play. Are they going to do it in those 1v1 moments? Because right now, they're having a bulk of the possession, but once they hit the final third, or it's really. Houston doing a good job of screening passes, making sure they are playing into those numbers up situations where they can win possession. But right now, Houston having some difficulty retaining possession. Reigns trying to thread the needle there, but it didn't quite come off for him. Here's Taylor. Garcia across to receive in the area. Taylor. In towards long one, who can control ahead of the keeper, and it's a huge save from Tarbell to deny the on four long one. A that was a great chance off the fortunate deflection. Oh, and it's given away there. Coleman has presented it. Wait, the offside flag has come up against O'Farson. It must have been for the movement before. I think they might be saying the ball went out of bounds before oh, the ball okay. was played backwards. This service here, Alonai just on an island against Smith, and what a save by Tarbell. And you almost think for a moment that Houston Dynamo have a transition here. Talk about an early impactful save by Tarbell. That's that looked, close. That is close. So they're saying that the ball went out for a throw. For Coleman presented it to a Barson. That is very much a fortunate decision for Minnesota. Obviously, the assistant's right there, so better place than we are, but still, considering where that pass was going and the chance it would have left to, Coleman will have to thank his lucky stars for that touchline. We have free kick now. Rossi over it. Easton whipped in ball comes glancing through the area, but the shove in there on DJ Taylor results in a free kick. He won the header, but it's off balance. This is a team in Houston that we've already seen, but we've seen it in previous matchups. That they're gonna defend well, they're gonna they're gonna defend services, which Again, if you're a team that's prepared for that, you get the numbers behind the ball and, and you make first contact. Obviously, that matchup right there with Smith and Longwane was not the preferred matchup on that service, but a save like that by Tarbell can really swing the momentum for this team. Bossy first time into the area. Helped on here for Corey Baird. Baird to strike. A deflection in the way. Shouts for hands, but... Referee immediately pointed to the right shoulder. It will be a corner. No VAR in the open cup, so this decision will stand regardless of what it looks like here. 
T.J. Taylor in the way, and his arm was down at his side. The referee was placed to award the corner here. Posse to swing it in. And rising in a chance there for Murana, but he couldn't quite get the clean contact. Came glancing through. Will be a throw in here for Houston Dynamo, but like it opened up there for a second for Mujib Murana. Houston now trying to apply some pressure. Avoiding the foul throw there. Get around long one is managed to win the free kick. Smith on his third MLS club. Spent four years in Seattle before heading to DC last year. Fortunately, tearing his ACL early in his tenure in the nation's capital. Came through the system at Liverpool. Football with Bournemouth as well as Long One A. Sees that falling behind. You saw there on your screen, Nashville did find the equalizer. 66th minute. It is Alex Muwil. Draws that tie level at Dry Pink Stadium now in the 70th minute of play. Brooklyn Reigns fouled there. 18 year old part of the residency program of Barcelona, which is based in Arizona. Houston acquiring his homegrown rights from Real Salt Lake. Played a fair bit for Houston Dynamo 2 and now getting a chance here in the Open Cup. talk about the schedule and the U.S. Open Cup. This is really where clubs and organizations showcase their depth. And as you mentioned with Houston Dynamo 2, homegrown players, A, this is an opportunity for them to showcase their characteristics and attributes as players, but for the organization to really display the depth and the quality that they have as we see the yellow card here on Ariaga. Yeah, strong challenge in there and Luis Caicedo in the first booking of the match handed to the Honduran. Ariaga is on four in the league. There are 20 international caps for the Honduran national side. Caicedo, shape ball to this right side, and Quinones now with a chance to cross. His hit well overcooked. Be playable here for Smith. Reigns. Caicedo. Needs to turn on it. Caicedo who is nearly two years of football as it's a nice through ball behind. Quinones, and it's the same there from Clint Irvin. The flag stayed down. What a through ball it was. And Quinones just couldn't apply the finish. And now both goalkeepers have exchanged game-changing saves. What a spot on that ball in behind. Perfectly timed as well. Here's Bassi. Again, trying to clip into the air and bear the attempt to flick on. It's a back heel, and it's a handball given against Michael Boxall, and it's a penalty to Houston Dynamo. And this has been a really good sequence by the Houston Dynamo. The patience here. That threaded ball through. The timing of the run. What a save there by Irwin now, who's going to have to 
make a save here on the penalty kick. And even as that ball traveled backwards, Minnesota just was never able to reestablish their, their line outside that 18-yard box. Retreated really quickly here. I beg your pardon, Longwane, who had his arm away from his body there on the attempted flick. And now a big chance here. And it's Baird who won it, who is going to take it. Interesting decision. Amina Bossi scored a penalty on each of his first four MLS starts. But it's Baird who made the run into the area that will get the award. The chance to take this penalty. Houston to go 1 0 up for a third time in its Open Cup. Front to the supporters end here. Shell Energy Stadium. For the handball against Longwane. Here's the attempt of Corey Baird. He goes down the middle. A cool take. And Baird is giving Houston the lead. And you said it. A cool take from the spot there by Baird. Drawing the penalty, finishing the penalty, and putting his side up 1-0. And for Houston Dynamo, although they've seen some selective moments in the final third, they have asked a lot of different questions of this Minnesota United side defensively. They've seen a couple early corner kicks, a couple set pieces, and then earning that penalty. And with as much defending as they've done thus far in this first half, Houston has. They find themselves up 1 0. His first goal of the year. All competitions for Corey Baird. Mentioning earlier, it's not quite been as prolific from a goal scoring point of view. His time in Houston, particularly compared to his time in Salt Lake. MLS Rookie of the Year in 2018. 15 goals in 90 games. His time with RSL is hit for just 3 in 45. His time in Houston as will be a throw to Houston down a moment to the displeasure of the. Minnesota United bench and technical area. And when you see an attacking player in that deeper position, I mean, it just speaks to the numbers that Houston is getting involved in the attack. You have a player like Longwane having to defend inside the 18-yard box. We were telling you about that match in Miami that's currently 1-1. They've now gone into lightning delay. So that one will take a while yet to finish. That will be a throw. For Minnesota, who now find themselves a goal behind. The 2023 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup delivers more heroics and more heartbreak tomorrow night. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. on CBS Sports Golasso Network. Games will be available on the Bleacher Report app and VR Football's YouTube channel. Visit usopencup.com for the full schedule and links to watch all the action. To USL, the MLS matches tomorrow. Birmingham, Charlotte. Pittsburgh and Columbus. The two on MLS sides remaining in the competition. Here's Boxall. There is still plenty of match left, but this is a position where Houston's found themselves to be very comfortable finding an early goal or finding the first goal and not conceding two clean sheets thus far in the two previous rounds. It just 
breeds confidence defensively when you know you're that difficult to break down. Caicedo okay, just sending it long. Larson now with the press has run off of Arriaga and gone down. The referee will award a, not just a foul, but a yellow card. This is going to be a second yellow for Arriaga. He is off. A red card shown to the Minnesota midfielder. Houston were down to 10 in the last round and still progressed. Now up a man and up a goal. And as you saw that develop, you saw where Ariaga was going defensively. And he knew how dangerous this transition moment was going to be for Olfarsson. And it draws the second yellow. Here's the first yellow. He puts his side down a player in the first half. And we talk about Houston scoring first and then being able to see a game out as they've had two clean sheets. This just makes that even more difficult for Minnesota as you could see the frustration from Ariaga. It was almost a careless turnover out of the back in that 1v1 moment. Chucking the tape on his hands in frustration. And now Minnesota are down to 10. Away from home in the Open Cup. And Houston will feel this is a big opportunity to get to the quarterfinal of the Cup competition. Arriaga taking a while to eventually walk off the pitch. And now Bassi will swing in the free kick. Drifting through to have a go! And it wasn't far away. Just wide there. He struck it sweetly, but just off target. And it's be interesting to see that if not only that double yellow changes the dynamic of the game, but does it change the pace in which Houston finishes off this first half? Do they go out and try to find this second goal before halftime? Because unquestionably, at halftime, Minnesota is going to make the adjustments to play with 10 players. So for Houston, do you play with a bit more pace and urgency to go ahead and find that second one here before, before this first 45 finishes out? Under Ben Olsen, they've only hit for more than one goal twice in 14 matches to make themselves a bit more comfortable here. I'm going to try and make their advantage tell. And add a second. Just some five minutes remaining in this first half in Minnesota. We'll have to take advantage of these sorts of opportunities. Sun Bing Jong into the penalty area. And away from Brad Smith. Set pieces will have to be the way forward. And you mentioned it. Set pieces, restarts, those are all going to be moments that Minnesota is going to try to control, use the time wisely, set up properly, be really detailed with those set pieces. It'll be a throw. Maples thought he played it off of Garcia, but in front of the assistant, electing to give it to Minnesota. Valentin will run over and get for match ball. Plenty of ramp for Valentin to get a long throw in. Again, these are the sorts of opportunities they'll try and create from. Got to see how the header on goal. Andrew Tarbo had to be alert to it. It was Longwane, I beg your pardon, who was able to direct that on target. A chance from the long throw. Yeah, we talk about the restarts and Houston possibly picking up the pace to go ahead and find that 
second goal and make this lead a bit more comfortable. But for Minnesota, really taking some of the, the air out of the ball and really taking advantage of those restarts and those long throw-ins. Smith, a nice ball forward up to a Parson who awkwardly controls it back to the Houston left back. Keeping a bit of possession, but the Icelandic forward hit off there with Smith. One of those things you lose when you don't play together every week from the starting lineup. The other intriguing element that will present itself in the second half is not only the adjustment that Minnesota United makes now with 10 players, but the same for, for Houston Dynamo in terms of what space do you really want to take advantage of now that you're up a player. We've already seen Smith be released really early on throughout the match, even when it was 11 v 11. This only this gives you even more to work with in terms of what spaces and angles you want to expose while you go, while you play forward. Saw Houston trying to hit a quick transition with Caicedo, but able to find Ofarsen. Now, Bassi has won it cleanly there. It's the cavalry to arrive. It's foul coming in there on Brooklyn Reigns. Smith. Get from Baird, who flicked up to win the handball and then converted the penalty. Quinones. Murana. And Zvietchenko. Smith on the turn there. Houston now showing a comfortable bit of possession here. Up a goal and up a man. Irving Arriaga getting two yellow cards. Getting his marching orders. Caicedo. Interchanging there with Murana. Houston mostly keeping it amongst the back six. Full Minnesota apart who but they moved into a 4-4-1. Their man disadvantage. Taylor Maples. Trying to go direct in behind it towards Bossi, who's looking to make the run off the shoulder there of Coleman, but Irwin there first. There's a minimum of three minutes added on at the end of this first half. Is a bit of awkward work there to do for Sviatchenko. Claimed there by Andrew Tarbell. Three minutes at the end of this first half. Svyatchenko making his first appearance. The Ukrainian-born international for Denmark. The captain for Michiland, one of the big clubs in Denmark. A serial winner for both Michiland and Celtic. So Farson helping it on through the area towards Baird. Rather than taking the strike on himself, Allowed Irwin the chance to step out and claim. This really did look like a sequence where O'Farson had a better opportunity to take it himself. Looking for Baird, and I know we've had the goal, and we've had the sending off of Ariaga, but was some of that momentum shifted with the Tarbell save? Lagwani. Both keepers have made big saves in this one. Sunbing Jung. Recent crossing. Garcia trying to get something to it. Garcia is judged to have headed that one out of play himself. Finish the point on Zvyachenko. Brought in this. Big experience center back into this team. 
won 11 trophies in Europe with Michelin in Denmark and Celtic in Scotland. Close to 400 appearances for those two giants of their respective countries. An overall drive this Houston side to bring in players that have won in other places. Ooh, the culture here. Group of winners. Key traits that they look for in the offseason. Offside flag up against Quinones and a bit too late on the ball into him there from Reigns. Will be a free kick, but work to do for Adrian Heath at the interval. Trying to adjust to find a way back into this game. Now down a man and down a goal. Supporters that came out on a Tuesday night. Let's see their side to an Open Cup quarterfinal. They would potentially face a fellow Texas rival. Drawn into this part of the draw with Austin FC and Chicago Fire. And there is the halftime whistle. Two big saves from Clint Irwin and from Andrew Tarbo at nil-nil. And the game changed when that man, Corey Baird, flicked onto the arm of Bungahukle Longwane in the penalty area, winning his side a penalty, which he would duly convert. Irving Arriaga would then earn himself a second yellow card. The Houston Dynamo now find themselves ahead by a goal and ahead by a man as Minnesota are down to 10 men. Your score at the break is Houston Dynamo 1, Minnesota 0. We'll take you through the highlights of this one and bring you closer to the second half on the other side. Houston leading Minnesota by a goal to 0 at the break.
the United States, and I believe the third oldest tournament in all of cup football in the world behind just the FA Cup and the Scottish FA Cup as well. 100 teams in. We're now down to 16 with two USL Championship sides remaining. As you look at the bracket, as we told you, the winner of tonight's game will face the winner of Austin FC and Chicago Fire. The late kickoff tonight in the West region is LA Galaxy and LAFC. In the Northeast region, tomorrow will be Pittsburgh and Columbus. Right now heading into extra time, it's New York and FC Cincinnati in the Southeast region. Birmingham, Charlotte tomorrow, Inter-Miami and Nashville are in a lightning delay. As we can show you the scores from the other games, as we mentioned, New York won, FC Cincinnati won a late equalizer from Dante Van Zier from the goal of Yuya Kubo of FC Cincinnati. So it's 1-1 heading to extra time at Red Bull Arena. Lightning delay between Miami and Nashville. Miami getting the goal through Franco Negri and Nashville through Alex Mawiles. We can now take you through the halftime highlights. Chris Whittingham, Eric Dabransky here for commentary. This one in Minnesota trying to press early and get something here. The cross from DJ Taylor would come kindly for Bongi Longwane, but a huge save from Andrew Tarbell. And it was really good balance from Minnesota United throughout the first 45, especially early on. They were stretching Houston. They were finding some of those wide services. And then Houston found these sequences where they really allowed numbers to join. They found advantages. And then this ball played in and a tremendous save by Irwin. And that was Tarbell and Irwin exchanging big saves. And then the handball inside the 18-yard box. And Barrett steps up, puts his team up 1-0. And then Ariaga had already picked up a yellow card at midfield in the first 25 minutes or so. And then turns this ball over. And knowing that his team's down 1-0, frantically tries to get back. And then the foul on Baird there. And picking up his second yellow of the night with the send off and now putting his team down a player and then for Houston they're going to continue to see a lot more of the ball now with, with being a player up and for Minnesota United they're going to have to pick and choose when and where they can attack we talked about it set pieces free kicks corner kicks are going to be really important to Minnesota United as that gives them the availability to send numbers forward and, and some of those scripted plays as well Eric, uh, on that uh, penalty decision, or uh, rather the second yellow card decision, was that worthy of a second yellow for you? It, yeah. It's tough because there's support defenders behind Ariaga, so I don't necessarily know if that was worth a second yellow. But in the run of play where it's a casual turnover right there, I mean, it, it's tough because Ariaga puts himself in that situation, but I think. Kamar Lawrence, Hassani Dotson, and Cameron Dunbar that come on. Lawrence and Dotson are regular starters in this team as well. So really about just limiting the workload for some players and also to try and change the shape of things a little bit down to 10 men. Moving in that first half to a 4-4-1 after the change rather after the red card. And so we'll see how Minnesota adjust here. Try and get something from this. They go from a set piece, can try and hang on in this one. Houston, we're down to 10 men in the last round against Sporting Kansas City for 55 minutes and hung on for a win. So it certainly can be done, but Minnesota in a far different situation finding themselves a goal behind as they're underway in the second half. Under Garcia trying to get 
involved straight away. Houston getting rid and want to try and make their advantage tell and have a fair bit of the ball and pick through Minnesota defense that will have space in and amongst it. They get control of the ball first. Here's Kamar Lawrence. Did you make it? Big move to Europe in 2020 to Anderlecht in Belgium, but like Crackett, the first team, moved back stateside and now flying straight here in Minnesota. These Maples will live on twice before eventually getting rid. And now a chance here for Baird to get forward into space. Baird on for Quinones. Look at the cross into the area. It's over the head there of Thoreau Farson. Now Basio played out the other side. We didn't mention the Houston change in the midst of all that. As Basio will get the subsequent cross in, it's over everyone's head and out for the goal kick. But Eric Spietchenko still working his way to full fitness and being ready and full for this side. Came off there for Ethan Bartlow, who has started each and every match at center back. For Houston in MLS play, he will come in that back four. Richard Heath throwing everything at it at halftime with the triple change and see if he can alter this one. Simon Jung as it cleared off him by Mujib Murata and out for the throw. Let's reset the teams for you. Andrew Tarbell is in goal. His third Open Cup start. Right to left back for Mujib Murana, Taylor Maples, Ethan Bartlow, and Brad Smith. Brooklyn Reigns and Luis Caicedo anchor the two in midfield. Baird, Thor O'Farson, part of that forward line. Nelson Quinones playing wide down the right, and Baird down, down the left in the attacking area. Sarek Valentin will get the cross into the area, the header away from Maples. And this is what's going to be interesting for the second half for Houston is how much of this half do they play cautious to really preserve a 1-0 lead because 1-0 moves you on to the quarterfinals. But also, how much do they want to play open and go ahead and find that second goal and really make put this game possibly out of reach for Minnesota playing a, a player down so it's going to be that balance, and I think that's where Minnesota is going to find some success on the ball, even though they're playing without Ariaga and playing 10 v 11. It's going to be on Houston to really dictate the tempo and the pace that they want to play. And does that change after 15 minutes? Do you go out and really open yourself up to quickly find a second goal? And then you sit back and you preserve it a bit. Again, playing a player up. You're going to want to be aggressive. You're going to want to go ahead and make this a bit easier of a match if you can find that second goal. Smith on for O'Farson. Now Houston trying to press. Dotson emerges with it. On from Dunbar for Garcia. It's well done by Minnesota United. Sun Min Chong. On for Dunbar, but didn't see the challenge coming from behind. And now a free kick given is Rosales getting a healthy amount there of Amina Basi and the eights colliding, resulting in a free kick to Houston. And we're going to see Minnesota switching the point really well, finding quick outlets. And then these fouls at midfield we're gonna see from both teams because they're gonna they're gonna be very careful with what they're willing to give up in some of those counter-attacking moments Quinones on for Farson off of Coleman and out for the throw let's reset the Minnesota team all right at Clint Irwin in goal Eric Valentin right back, the two center backs, Michael Boxall and Brent Coleman. Kumar Lawrence has come on as a sub. Four in the middle. Bin Chong, Dotson, 
Rosales and Cameron Dunbar on the right. Free kick given to Houston. And then Garcia leads the line. Here's Smith. Corey Baird. And Amina Bassi. Pressing to get a second. I told you in the first half, they've only found two goals twice this season. Goal wins over Austin and LA Galaxy. Those touches there from Reigns. And Brad Smith is in space. Not too many targets. The cross is in and over hit there. Quinones going down and trying to win something off of Lawrence, but that free was unmoved as it does come out for the throw. And it's going to be really important for Minnesota United to really stay switched on on those wide services because they know they're going to have to absorb a lot of the pressure here in the this second 45, but they're really trying to pick that one moment and create that one chance they need to equalize. But besides that, they know they're going to have to put numbers in the box. They have to be really detailed on covering those dangerous areas. It's the last thing you want to do is concede a second goal. News of a goal from one of the other games going on tonight in the Open Cup. A 73rd minute goal for Nicolas Stefanelli of Inter Miami. To give them the 2-1 lead. The cross is Caught there easily by Clint Irwin, back from a lightning delay at Drag Pink Stadium. Kickoff resuming about 10 minutes ago. Just as Nashville had drawn level, Miami get the lead to try and get to the quarterfinal. Foxhall. Hit there in the direction of Valentin. He did manage to get there. Is off of Baird last and will be a throw. Houston trying to end a run of dominance. This fixture. Minnesota have won the last six meetings between Minnesota United and Houston in MLS, including. Last Wednesday night, a 1-0 win for the Loons back at Allianz Field. Look there from Garcia. Free kick given as Rain stepped in the way. And nothing that's going to really disrupt what Minnesota's trying to do. I mean, it allows them to get numbers behind the ball, get shape. They just don't want to find themselves in another situation where they're accumulating yellow cards, but fouls and buildup really not going to hinder anything that Minnesota's trying to do. You know it's going to add a little, bit of, a little bit of frustration, but you can see Houston already Sending numbers forward a bit earlier and quicker than they did early on in that first half. Knowing they have the numbers and coverage. Brad Smith trying to play in behind. Does manage to recover it. Caicedo. For New England Revolution players. It's helped on there towards Bassi, but. Played the right weight there from Baird. Now, Sangbin Jong. Let's see as he was drifting through that midfield area. Just weren't any running mates. Continue to mention Minnesota playing down to 10 players for the second yellows. It's given away there by Coleman. Similar giveaway in the first half, but was fortunate that flag went up for a throw. It's lofted in towards Bossy, the header won there by Coleman. Frenchman will get there first. And from Metz in the 
French second division. As I mentioned in the first half, hit for penalties. His first four MLS matches, scoring all of them. history had a longer scoring streak start his major league soccer career that being Taylor Twelman doing the revolution hit for goals in his first six games Bossy hitting for goals in his first four still integrating into this team a lot of pieces coming together 16 additions the Flygon transfer window and Ben Olsen Figuring them all out. Ibrahim Aliou, the most recent, is available from the bench. Started the weekend in there. 1-1 one, one draw away at Dallas. And this is a spell that Minnesota's okay with because everything's being played amongst that back line. The midfield goes backwards. You want to make Houston make a decision and not hand them a decision in the final third. Go back to being frustrated. It is going to be frustrating to not see a lot of the ball for Minnesota United, but again, Houston not going anywhere with it. Pick and choose your moments. You mentioned it a couple sequences ago. It, there's going to have to be an understanding and decision making when going forward for Minnesota United. When are their numbers? When's their support? When's the interchange there, the collective involvement. And that's definitely something Adrian Heath and his staff brought up at halftime to their squad. Nice ball from Bassi out towards Quinones. His cross is away there from Valentin. Caicedo. Rana. Brad Smith. Five and a sub appearances in the league. Second star here in the Open Cup. All the way back to Bartlow. Players who stuck around, they're not a ton of them to be fair. It's come here for Fassi. Little options to aim for. The pullback is in towards Quinones. He steadies himself to have a go. Never going to work his way around Lawrence. He didn't know what he had behind him. It almost looked like if he had played the ball off to his left. He appreciate the decisiveness, putting it on his right foot, but as you mentioned, having to work around Lawrence as well. Really tremendous defender. Minnesota at this stage of the competition. They went on to win it all. Houston are readying a double change. And we will see Ache Ache come on in this game. Hector Herrera. All time great Mexican internationals. This will be him and the aforementioned Aliu who will come on as the Maples. I think a run out, but it will be a corner. Minnesota United and has to take advantage here from the precious set piece opportunities that the Loons will get here. And now the double change will come in for Houston and a change as well for Minnesota as Amaria will come on for Mendel Garcia. So just the one change left for Adrian Heath on the hour. Houston their powder dry until they've defended this set piece. We generally don't make changes while you're defending no, a set no, piece. No. And that's that's something where for Minnesota United absolutely make the change. 
A different look on the offensive side, but defensively, let it be set. The corner will be whipped in towards that back post. Dotson with work to do to try and get there, and with a waste of a set piece opportunity there for Minnesota. And now the changes will occur. So Reigns will come off on the hour for Hector Herrera. Eric player to bring off the bench. And Ibrahim Aliou, the young Nigerian, will come on for Thor Olfarsson, the hero at the weekend, getting that late equalizer for the hero in the last round of the cup. Scoring Reigns only goal in their 1 0 win for Sporting Kansas City in the fourth round of the Open Cup and shows you what Ben Olsen's mindset is. Really going after that second goal. Wants to put a lot more pressure into this Minnesota United side. Again, just presenting a different look as well. You're playing a player up. Manipulate some of the scenarios that really begin to present themselves throughout the rest of the second half. Murana. Fossi will slide it in behind. It's a decent idea in towards Aliou, who just came on, but Clint Derwin had it read the whole way. Now, like Aliou will lead the line in a wide position at the weekend. It's a free kick given. Get back and play quickly. Lawrence receiving from Luisa Maria. Spent ball in behind. Here's Dunbar. Low in towards. On there, Sang Bin Jong. Just couldn't get there. It was good covering, defending from Maples. And putting there is Dunbar on the space in behind. Now Acha Acha directing traffic. Bassi. Right up. And Baird. Being made beyond him. Corey Baird now. Nelson Quinones. Caicedo. Mina Bassi. Houston enjoying a nice spell of possession here. Bassi and Herrera, they're interchanging, having to recover it though. Zorro. And now Bassi measuring the volley, and it's down the barrel at Irwinu. Able to handle cleanly. You do have to like the commitment on both sides of the ball for Houston. Sometimes when you play numbers up, like Houston is, you get a bit too casual in the thinking in terms of who's supporting who, who's covering what space, what does the man marking look like? Now Houston is covering the ground, covering the spaces, not allowing Minnesota United to create any of those. They did concede that corner kick just a few moments ago, but besides that, I haven't really seen too much danger coming towards Andrew Tarbell. Bossi on for Quinones. And I'll make the run beyond him. Played in towards Amina Basi, who tried to just chip it inside there of Lawrence. It did come off the Jamaican international left back and out for a corner to Houston. And as the second half wears on, I'm interested to see, and there was substitutions obviously made at halftime going into to start the second half by Minnesota United. But as the second half wears on, what does the fatigue look like? Corner taken short. Herrera could have a go. Herrera! Just wide. 
of his third Houston goal. Hector Herrera has come on and made an impact, but that one's just off target. Quick short corner here, nobody recognizing for Minnesota United. And then Herrera putting it on that left foot, almost curling it right past Irwin. And that fatigue from, from Minnesota United might not set in just yet, but maybe someone in that decision making just like that short corner is a pretty simple play. trying to win it. Managed to focus it on here for Sang Min Jong. Now Dunbar trying to get the strike away. And stinging the palms there of Andrew Tarbell. Mudana clearing, but Dunbar has provided a threat. Back substitution from Adrian Heath. Really decisive movement there by Minnesota United. One, two, three passes and they were in. And that's what Adrian Heath and his side are gonna look for to try to get back into this match. Moxall getting caught. A free kick given, advantage awarded, and it would eventually be a yellow card to Michael Boxall. Not protest too much. Have a look at, it took a slight deflection there off the boot of Bartlow as well to make it that extra bit more complicated. And look at the yellow card. Those are those moments where Minnesota United is going to really try to deny some of those transition sequences for Houston. Whether that's through a successful tackle or through a foul as well. Bossy, nice through line for Baird. Second! Lovely chip for Black staying down. And this time, a beautiful pass from Amina Bossy results in a goal. Getting the penalty in the first and the cheeky little chip for the 2 0 lead for Houston Dynamo. And really, we just saw it a moment ago with the quick restart on the corner for Houston. Now, again, free kick Herrera on it, ball play through, and the slightest of touches into Baird. And while Minnesota United's appealing for an offsides, the clever finish by Corey Baird who collects the brace for the night. Extending his team's lead. We already thought it was going to be difficult for Minnesota United being a player down to find the equalizer against such a solid defensive side in Houston Dynamo. Now finding that precious second goal that we've mentioned throughout the evening. And now, would appear on their way to an Open Cup quarterfinal. Face the winner of Austin and Chicago in the next round. Those two will play tomorrow. Smith. Side. And now stretching his legs. Again, the idea to play it in behind. This time from Baird. Herrera though on for Bassi. Back for Herrera. And now Quinones trying to pass the ball into the net. The offside flag coming up against Quinones. That could have been a spectacular third if not for the flag. I'm not certain. Oh, Valentin might yeah, have kept it, it all it on. Looked as if. Jonas was onside. Trying to play the ball back to Herrera in that sequence. Full time at Dry Pink Stadium. Inter Miami are through to the Open Cup quarterfinal. After beating Nashville SC by two goals to one. Go Stefanelli with the winning goal. So Miami will face the winner 
Birmingham Legion and Charlotte FC. Salas, plenty of space on this right though. Getting forward here, Valentin. He'll lift the cross in. It's catching practice for Andrew Tarbell. So Valentin found himself in acres on that right. Now, Houston nearly played themselves into trouble. Emerge with it there. Caicedo. Now Baird. Smith joining him on the overlap. He'll play him in. Brad Smith's low cross is cut up there by Boxall at the near post. Houston finding the openings. This game going back and forth. And Houston has found some moments where they've gotten over shifted in that back line and that right flank really opens up for Minnesota United. Now with this 2-0 lead, really understand that just accept some of those services are going to be clipped in and as you mentioned that last one was just floated in and Tarbell able to meet it at its highest point nothing dangerous Jonas's effort gone wide there Houston making another change as Amina Basi an incredibly influential passing game come off with the introduction of Ivan Franco. The big packages in the offseason, including from Libertad in Paraguay. But where Houston have gone to get a couple of players, Franco and Sebas Herrera, their record signing. We've talked throughout the decisions that these teams, these coaches, these organizations have to make going into such a congested week and weeks, whether it's regular season, U.S. Open Cup, both these coaches having to deal with completely different scenarios within the 90 as well. Ben Olsen now with a two-goal lead. Do you start to see some of that a little bit more rotation now? Try to get fresh legs out there preparing for a Saturday match as well. And for Adrian Heath, facing a two-goal deficit, what are the decisions? Do you try to find that first one within this, before the 80th minute, around the 80th minute, and, and try to find the equalizer past that? But if you're still down 2-0 with less than 10 left, what becomes the rotation at that point? Do you start maybe looking at Saturday already? Obviously, these two head coaches and these, these two clubs are extremely ambitious when it comes to chasing silver like the U.S. Open Cup. But it's just tough decisions when you face a double yellow on the red card that Ariaga picked up in the first half. Ragapane now over the free kick. Came on for Sangmin Jung. So we'll commit numbers forward here to try and get back into the game. First man, Caicedo. Now could there be a break on Fragapane? Going to get right side there. But Murana, we gave it away. Now Rosales, the snapping challenge coming in. It'll be another free kick here. As Quiñones put the challenge in. And it's taken quickly. Fragapane for Rosales. His cross is massively overhead. Straight out for a throw. And one that... Honduran will want back. And unfortunately for those situations where Minnesota United has had numbers forward, they've really missed on the services in those entry balls, whether it was the corner kick or that service right there. Smith. Cameron Dunbar trying to get the cross away. He's really trying to win a corner there and peg it off with Smith, but sailing into the supporter's stand, which 
That was a safe standing element to it. The innovations brought in by new owner Ted Siegel to this Shell Energy Stadium, including its new name. Safe standing, new seats all over the ground, made from mesh rather than from plastic to help with the heat, particularly during the summer months. And that Austin FC introduced into the league at Q2 Stadium. Overall fan forward vision under Ted Siegel, the owner took over a couple of years ago. Wants to take this club forward through some record signings, giving sporting director Pat Onstad and Ben Olsen the chance to build and move results. Currently just below the playoff line in 10th in the league. Want to push on. Quinones and Franco returning it towards Quinones, but short backtrack in there from Lawrence. And you have to believe that Ben Olsen and Pat Onstad are understanding and patient with the fact that you're going to build this team around that defensive structure. And as we talked about in the first half, it's just going to take a little bit for the offensive side to gel. That, that always becomes the more difficult portion of the field because of the lack of space, the decisiveness, the combination, the link-up play. You really need to start getting into rhythm. And for, for this team, they're going to hang their hat on and take a lot of pride in the way they defend. And a result, if they can hang on to a clean sheet in this result as well, it just continues to build belief. And then it starts to open up the offensive side as well, knowing that that structure is always going to be there defensively. And if they keep a clean sheet tonight, that would be three U.S. Open Cup matches in this tournament. No goals against. And, and, and that's, that says a lot. First time strike there from Herrera, spilled by Irwin. He manages to hang on. Herrera caught it cleanly. Straight at the goalkeeper. What I was going to say is it says a lot about the collective and the identity of this team, the depth. And for Ben Olsen, you've got to hope that it gains traction going into the MLS regular season as well. Make 10 changes and still have the 2-0 lead here in the Open Cup. Decent display of depth here from this Houston side is on from Kragapane and Dotson. Maria trying to play around the corner. Looked like it opened up for Amaria. Minnesota remain down to 10 men. Irving Arriaga with the two yellows picked up in the first half. Houston did have the lead before that yellow. Bear can get forward. And into space here is Ibrahim Aliou! His first Houston Dynamo goal! And the young Nigerian confirms Houston Dynamo are heading to the Open Cup quarterfinal. It's 3 0 to the Dynamo. And knowing and understanding that they can play forward really quickly. And Corey Barrett, who has now had a say in three of the goals tonight, he really manipulates the space that Ali was able to run into. Good patience on the run. Barrett committing that central defender over to that right side as well. Well-weighted pass into space. Just the calm finish by Aliu getting his head up, getting a new picture of where Irwin is off his line. Ben Olsen and his side have to be really pleased with the overall performance. Obviously, that dynamic changed a bit when Minnesota 
went down a player. But even before then, they started to get footing into the match. They started to grow into the match. And right up. Smith will get there. Plenty of pace down that left side. Smith, the cross. We recover here by Quinones. And Houston now trying to hit for more than three for the first time under Ben Olsen. What a prolific scoring team. Their newest manager, his first year, two years off from coaching. MLS, all from the organization of Washington Spirit for a little while, the NWSL side. here in Houston. He's at DC United for 10 years. Is the yellow card going to be shown here in the direction of Caicedo for his challenge there on Dunbar? <laughs> Booking of the match shown for a Houston Dynamo player. 3-0 up, rather. Look at that challenge. Shoulder from the back there of Dunbar. Griffin Dorsey will come on. There's the final throw of the dice from manager Olsen. Quinones is the player who makes way. And a lot of credit to this Houston Dynamo midfield. Caicedo, Quinones, Brooklyn Reigns bringing on Hector Herrera when it was only 1-0. Finding two goals, creating two goals with the substitutions. Herrera with the quick restart for the goal before Baird second. Corey Baird's on a hat trick as he drifts into the air. Corey Baird! Really a breakout performance for him is will be a goal kick here. As they come out of play before Foxall can get rid. Baird, I think, was looking for that hat trick. He had out of you available to his left. When you're flowing with the confidence that yeah. Corey Baird is flowing with, why not? direct your attention to the other Open Cup game in action at the moment with the early kickoff. But New York Red Bulls and FC Cincinnati are currently in penalties. Everyone also available on the BR Football YouTube channel. New York Red Bulls is having their first penalty saved. It's 1-0 to Cincinnati after the first round of takes. Football YouTube channel. Now again, Houston on the break. Franco's got options. He plays an alley you Could go for his second. Save again from Clint Irwin. And almost a replica run from alley you Inside out. Creating that space for himself. Houston again winning possession. Dorsey is at times played as a right back for Houston is taking up a position on this right wing. Houston just seeing out this game. Minnesota go back to work in the league. They entertain Rail Salt Lake and then again playing midweek football next Wednesday. Is there a way at Austin? Will be Chicago Fire. Those two sides meeting tomorrow. 
also available on the platforms of Bleacher Report. Dorsey. The cross is set right back towards him there by Lawrence. Two one Cincinnati after two rounds of takes in that penalty shootout. Baird that interchange there, able to control it. Helped on here is Dunbar. Carry forward. Cincinnati converting their third through Dominique Baji. Rosales. Dotson. Minnesota United hosting, as you mentioned, Real Salt Lake, a team that plays tomorrow night in the Open Cup as they travel to the Colorado Rapids. Consecutive matchups at Colorado. 3-2 win for Real Salt Lake in the MLS regular season. And just as Minnesota United came into this matchup having to defeat Houston for a second time within six days. Now it's gonna be Real Salt Lake in their matchup tomorrow. When you talk about some of the travel that these teams face, Real Salt Lake going from Colorado, gonna travel on Thursday over to Minnesota. It's a busy period. MLS is now playing as many as four competitions. And those sides that play in the Champions League. Obviously the league play, the Open Cup, and now the new League's Cup. Starting in July as Smith is low cross. It's deflected there by Boxall. And trying to get Minnesota moving forward. All too much, though, for Dunbar. And Taylor Maples makes his first Dynamo start for the senior team. The challenge tonight to hang on could be part of his first Dynamo clean sheet. And we highlighted the, the depth that these organizations look to display through U.S. Open Cup regular season, as you mentioned, a number of other. Franco playing in behind Aliou, will pull it back for Baird. There's his hat trick. Equaling his previous total of Houston Dynamo goals in one night. It's a breakout evening for Corey Baird. It's a breakout evening for Houston Dynamo. They're into the quarterfinal with a 4-0 lead. And the commitment to the runs off the ball for Houston. And really recognizing when those dangerous runs are initiated. Now you finding Corey Baird, who decisively and calmly tucks it away. Saw it in the chance earlier by Corey Baird. Looking for that hat trick, and now he finds it. You said it. Really, breakout performance for Corey Baird, but also for this Houston Dynamo side. I'm saying with all the competitions in the league and the depth, we have so much science within the game now with GPSs, the trackers, the there's so much that goes into it, but there's still the aspect of how players are feeling, the fatigue. There's so many things that, that come into play when making some of those decisions. When you play those midweek fixtures, and whether you're hosting or on the road. So those decisions are so fluid for these coaches and these players. Trying to add more to this lead. 
Confirmation of a full-time result in our other Open Cup match tonight. FC Cincinnati are going through to the Open Cup quarterfinal, converting all five of their penalty takes. Acosta, Moreno, Baji, Mosquera, and Barreal all converting from the spot, knocking at the New York Red Bulls out of the Open Cup. So Cincinnati, who are top of the Supporters' Shield standings in MLS, are now going through to the Open Cup quarterfinal as well. Plays the winner of Pittsburgh and Columbus. Final seconds ticking from the minimum of one. At the end of this match, Minnesota down to 10 men. Just could not hang on in this second half and create anything as Amaria will try and get one last chance at a consolation goal. Turns and passes it back. And there is the full-time whistle. Houston hit for four for the first time under Ben Olsen. Corey Baird gets a hat trick. They've knocked Minnesota United out of the Open Cup by four goals to nil. Really comprehensive performance by Houston Dynamo. Knowing in that second half that they were going to be a player up for a full 45. Knew where and how to expose that dangerous space and capitalized. Found three goals, created those three chances. And what a night for Corey Baird. Started with the penalty in the first half. But a Houston Dynamo side that just continued to find a rhythm on the ball in the offensive third. And you knew they were going to be tough to break down defensively. But once this team got going offensively in the second half, there was no stopping them. And Houston get the 4 0 win as we can now show you the bracket in this central region. Houston through 8 p.m. Central Time kickoff. Between Austin FC and Chicago Fires tomorrow night from Q2 Stadium. If Austin get the home win, we'll have a Copa Tejas quarterfinal between a pair of Texas sides, but Chicago will do their best away from home. As we can now take you through our full-time highlights from this one, show you the goals in this game. We'll start first with the handball that leads to the penalty for Houston. Corey Baird would take after he won it off the arm of Bongi Longwane and Baird with a simple finish down the middle. And this was really when Houston was starting to find a footing in the game. They started to get really good numbers in the final third, really forcing Minnesota United to drop into their own 18-yard box, the handball there, and then Ariaga already playing on a yellow, gathering his second, putting his team down a player, and after that, the field was really tilted with Houston Dynamo just going and finding different spaces to expose and Corey Baird had himself a night. The substitutes making a quick impact as well for Houston Dynamo. And then Corey Baird, not only the three goals, but the assist on the alley goal right here. Delaying the run, the pace of the pass, and then the finish around Irwin and then things went from bad to worse for Minnesota United getting split open Aliu returning the favor from the assist from Corey Baird the access to the hat trick for Corey Baird on the night and overall just really solid in both boxes for Houston Dynamo and the statistics would reveal the ultimate domination on the night from Houston. 60% of the ball. Minnesota made three changes at the half to try and hang on and get something from it. But in the end, not enough as Houston would find the spaces, particularly as that second half wore on. Corey Baird involved in all four goals. His greatest night as a Houston Dynamo player. And the players dancing and enjoying their night out with the supporters as Houston Dynamo are through to the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup quarterfinal as they beat Minnesota United tonight by four goals to nil. What a night for Corey Baird. What a night for Houston. They continue their home dominance, five wins in seven in this building and will now face the winner of either Austin or Chicago. For our tremendous production team and broadcast partner Eric Dabransky, my name is Chris Whittingham signing off Houston Dynamo, led by a hat-trick from Corey Baird, are through to the Open Cup quarterfinal. They beat Minnesota United 
by four goals to nil.